No motor, no kickstand. No, <laughs> I got an electric bike and Rose didn't. <laughs> Arriving in Rio, we set up shop on the iconic Copacabana Beach and decided to explore our surroundings. Of course, I somehow ended up with some cut-rate, self-propelled bicycle, while Chad ended up with a motor assist pimp scooter. Rose is rocking the motor assist, so she gets to feel like a real biker now. <laughs> but being the gentleman he is, he traded me his little orange hot rod so I could wreak havoc on the bike paths of Rio. Why are you on the sidewalk? I go off road. Rose is breaking the law. <laughs> After terrorizing both Copacabana and Ipanema Beach. No, it did not working for you. And more rental bike woes. My bike had a flat tire. Actually, Rose's bike had a flat tire. I gave her my bike. So now I'm on foot and she's uh We returned to the hotel to clean up for our next adventure. A top 10 tour of Rio's highlights, including this guy. Christ the Redeemer. Taking the scenic route and stopping for pictures along the way, we navigated the neighborhood of Santa Teresa with its narrow cobblestone streets and French architecture. once home to upper crust European immigrants. It is today a bohemian enclave, similar to New York's Greenwich Village, minus the gentrification. And it just so happens to be on the way to Rio's most iconic landmark. 635 metric tons of Art Deco Jesus sitting high above the city. When he decides to make an appearance, that is. It's Christ the Redeemer back there. Kind of hard to see, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs> he's, he's back there somewhere in the fog. <laughs> this statue adorning the peak of Corcovado Mountain hosts nearly two million visitors annually. Both the statue, the views from Corcovado, and the crowds are impressive. With a unique Catholic mass meets monkeys meets theme park vibe. Complete with special forces to ensure that nobody fucks with the Jesus. You said it, man. Escaping the crowds, we followed the tram lines down the mountain to, well, more crowds. At the Escandaria Celaron, over 250 tile-covered stairs, which are not fun to climb in moto boots. This Instagram-ready hotspot named after Chilean-born artist Jorge Celaron, who randomly started tiling steps in 1990 until his death in 2013, is popular with influencers and pickpockets alike.
Leaving the crowds behind, we went in search of something a little more low-key and ended up in Little Africa, which as it turns out, is very low-key on a lazy Sunday afternoon. Why'd you do that? Because the bike was going to go. No? No. Uh, I just caught it out of the corner of my eye. It looked like it was going. Yeah. Did I overreact? It's all right. It's all good. Did I scream like a girl? Cried a little. <laughs> Cried a little. <laughs> After a couple more quick stops by a contemporary and not so contemporary gold gilded cathedral so Chad could scratch his church itch and I could repent for, well, things that didn't make it to YouTube. We headed back to the beach for our final stop of the day and one of Rio's most popular attractions, Sugarloaf. But as fate would have it, we missed the mark on what was supposed to be a sunset tram ride to the top of this impressive edifice, and instead got treated to some nighttime panoramas of Rio's never-ending coastline. I think we missed the sunset. Yeah, we did. All in all, not a bad way to kill a bit of time in Cidade Maravilhosa, the marvelous city of Rio de Janeiro. <laughs>